innovate, accelerate, move technology forward. The start of revolution is now. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon session, Further Together with the Future Tech Giants. To our esteemed guests from the startup community, glad to have you with us. My name is Michael Ruiz, current Senior Manager and Head of PLDT Enterprise Core Networking and Platforms Innovations. These past few days, we have witnessed invaluable insights on how the Philippine startup community indeed is thriving through the support of fellow startups, incubators, accelerators, the academe, as well as investors willing to take a leap of faith in the hopes of finding the next unicorn. This afternoon, allow us to share how the PLDT group can play a role in this community to build and co-innovate as we have invited distinguished members from the PLDT group, starting off with Mr. Melvin Jeffrey Chan. Melvin is currently the Vice President and Head of PLDT Enterprise Innovations, Business Development, Consulting and Pre-Sales. Melvin has over 18 years of professional experience, including several leadership roles in information technology and telecommunication industry across functional domains such as sales, pre-sales, operations, business development, product management strategy, consulting, innovations, and research and development. He also obtained his Bachelor of Science in Manufacturing Engineering and Management degree from the De La Salle University and his Master of Electronics Engineering degree from the University of Tokyo through a full-time scholarship from Panasonic. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Melvin Jeffrey Chan. Startup Week 2022, a quick shout out to our friends from the Cubo and Ideaspace, and greetings all of, of our hosts, organizers, fellow sponsors, and colleagues, guests, and friends, and of course, to our all startup partners and founders. Good afternoon to all of you, and thank you for tuning in with us this afternoon. I'm Melvin Jeffrey Chan, who's heading the PLDT Enterprise Innovation, Business Development, Consulting, and Pre-Sales. Today, I would like to cover the topic on how PLDT Enterprise co-innovate with our startup communities. Uh, but before I go into that part, allow me to share a little bit about PLDT. You perhaps don't know. PLDT is the largest integrated telco in Philippines comprised of fixed wireless and ICT business. And we believe that to lead with and inspire Filipino to create a better tomorrow, because we strongly believe that information and communication is a key technology to enable and to shape the future of Filipino society. And like our mission says, to empower Philippines everywhere with customer-focused digital innovation that unlock and share their infinite potentials. But uh, we in the PLDT, is te the telco arm is not alone. Within the whole conglomerate group, we have the telco and ICT, including PLDT Smart, EPLDT, PLDT Global, Maya, and so on and so forth. We also have our utilities arms, including Manila, uh, Meralco and so on. In the media side, for example, like Signal TV5, Philippine Inquirers and, and, and the others, infrastructures and healthcare. And from um, where I came from, uh, the PLDT Enterprise, um, we've, we cover Philippine enterprises that serving the small, medium, large and top tier enterprise in the Philippines. Uh, with more than 4,000 enterprise personnel in the group and covering around 65% enterprise market share for Kinetic FD and various ICD solutions. A quick egg, uh, fact checks on our numbers and our uh, total capabilities. Uh, being the largest integrated telco in the Philippines, we have more than 7 million fixed and broadband subscrib subscribers and close to 70 million uh, on mobile sites. Uh, with the largest data uh, center footprints in Philippines with more than 9,000 racks across and a total capacity of 26 megawatts. And we're start building the number 11 data center in Santa Rosa. With the largest uh, fiber footprint, more than 8,000 kilometers uh, around the whole country and more than 60 tetrabits per second consolidated international capacity. 
Uh, we have more than 77,000 cellular base stations and more than 7,000 5G sites among it. Uh, and I, I'm happy to tell that Smart 5G remains as the fastest network in the country. Based on third-party speed test intelligent data analysis by Okla, Smart remains the fastest network with more than 200 megabits per second medium speed download and 26 medium megabit speed, uh, megabits bits per second upload. Uh, also, we have the widest coverage nationwide, the best overall experience for video, streaming, gaming, voice application, and downloading speed. And I would happy, happy to say that with the best network in the Philippines. And from an international connectivity and capacity angle with the additional international subsea cabling system, namely the ADC, the Jupiter, and the Apricot, which terminating in 20 countries, Countries, PLDD will have now more than 19 of subsea cabling system in total and delivering 130 terabits per second of international network capacity, hopefully by 2024. Uh, with the current largest data center footprints in the country, PLDT has more than 10 data centers in total while building the number 11 in Santa Rosa. Vitro is continuously expanding with sustainability in mind and targeting a 40% reduction on carbon emission by 2030. A quick zoom in into Vitro Santa Rosa, which will be rise in 2023, aiming to host a global hyperscalers traffic in a, a world-class data center facility with initially more than 36 megawatts IT loads capacity and more or to expand in the future. Taking sustainability on mind while building it, aiming with a, a 1.4 PUE designs and a minimum 20% renewable, renewable energy from the start. So why am I showing you this, some of the core capability of PLDT? It's because uh, about one thing, what I like to talk about, the digital transformation. Digital transformation is not a recent buzzword. It started after the invention of the internet in the 80s, and in the 90s were the period of many familiar software platforms, digital services, and technology companies were created and evolved over the next 30 years of time. And now cloud, SaaS, AI, Industry 4.0, connected cars, smart cities are all part of the technology advancement of digital transformation, digital transform, is all how to enhance business decision, improve efficiency, reducing costs, and create best customer experience for enterprises. Um, and digital transformation can be enabled by a lot of different emerging technologies, such as the AI, the big data, the next generation connectivity in 5G and IoT, the distributed infrastructure in cloud and edge computing, the trust architecture, such as zero trust security and blockchain, and so on and so forth. And with that, allow me to share a video called A Flavor of Emerging Techs on how we in PLDT Enterprise envision how emerging tech will shape the future of enterprises. In today's ever-changing business landscape, all industries are facing more uncertainties while striving towards recovery and growth. As we take on new challenges, let's expect that there are just as much exciting opportunities emerging, where each discovery is a surprise of its own. The business demands of tomorrow require us to reframe our perspectives. We believe that harnessing our collective strengths and innovating with new technologies can help bring out the best of your business. Answering the inevitable question, where do we go from here? In order to truly pivot to becoming a future-ready digital organization, enterprises must have a strong operational and technological backbone. Built upon global best practices and aligned with sustainability goals, all while maximizing technologies that help optimize business excellence. Embracing new technologies leads to elevated digital experiences contributing to the ultimate goal of doing business better and improving the way we serve our customers. PLDT Enterprise will walk along with you as you embark on your transformation journey, from resilience to resurgence, to 
together, let's reimagine the future of business with emerging technologies. Okay. So now you saw a vision of how uh, we in PLD Enterprise envision how emerging tech will shape the future of doing business. And so, and so if it's part of your vision in your own startups and would like to co-innovate, co-marketing, or even prototyping or just exchanging ideas, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to discuss with you. Technology evolves through the ages. Some have a fundamental impact in our daily life. From early on, steam engines, silicon chips, networking, personal computer, um, and to the many gadgets that we all love and use in our daily life, and the associated huge data centers and infrastructures that support the application that impact our lives. But one thing has always been consistent. Throughout the history, it is that innovation is inevitable. Innovation never sleeps. Technology is meant to scale and evolve, and it is inevitable that the new technology and services will emerge to transform and ultimately improve our experience of life, work, and play. We are you know, primed to jump in the next curves of technologies that we see these emerging technologies are shaping our lives in one giant ecosystem that are interconnected. Emerging technologies is defined as technologies that have a strong potential of driving vision, strategy, and disrupting the way of doing business. May it be near, mid, or future term. In my personal view, uh, I'm very interested, but not limited to some of these areas. For example, AI, the simulation of human intelligence processed by machine and computer system. Internet of Things, the network of physical devices embedded with electronics, AI, sensors, and connectivity enabling the exchange of data. The blockchain, a decentralized distributed ledger that records provenance of digital assets and or protecting the data integrity and metaverse. I hypothetical in iterations of the internet as a single, universal, and immersed virtual world facilitated by AR and VR. And all these emerging techs are interdependent to each other in a huge ecosystem. No one can take it all. So we would require innovation, innovative entities to be part of this journey to help our enterprises, customers enabling their digital transformation journey. You as a startup can also be part of this, of course. Allow me to share a couple of case studies that those uh, technologies I mentioned a while ago. For example, National Oil Well Varco is an oil and drilling uh, equipment manufacturing company, uses AI to maximize the profitability, optimize the manufacturing process, and shorten the supply chains. In terms of IoT, Pepsi Cola, uh, multinational companies for beverage, snacks, and food, they develop an auto, auto, autonomous uh, AIoT, which is AI plus IoT solution to increase the efficiency while maintaining the quality in the Cheetos that they're manufacturing. In terms of uh, blockchain, Home Depot, the one actually we know very well, is uh, expediting their uh, reconciliation process by allowing their team and the vendor process share near real-time data of packages of shipments across their supply chain. Metaverse, Shanghai Yueyang Hospital has launched a VR-based therapy, therapy for patients suffering from Alzheimer's, sport injuries, stroke fractures, and so on and so forth. And finally, last but not the least, uh, Amazon Go. Amazon Go uh, using intelligent automation system that creating an intelligent retail experience through their cashless Amazon Go grocery system. So uh, once you enter with a simple scan of your identity, in this case is establishing your wallet and your shopping cart, and you can enjoy the unassisted shopping experience. Thousands of smart cameras and sensors, which in this case are all the IoT devices, monitor the behavior of picking up an item from the store shelves and automatically add them to your cart. The same is true for returning them. 
a lot of this is made only possible because of the deep learning algorithm and sensor functions, creating this fully automated experience. And once done, as Amazon say, you can just walk out and the wallet of where you had original enter with it will be charging, uh, will be charged for your groceries. According to the most recent study from Global Data, the projection shows that the global AI revenue will reach around 135.8 billion by 2026, a CAGR 14% over the five years of period. In the area of IoT, the global market was worth 622 billion in 2020 and will grow to reach a more than $1 trillion by 2024. The enterprise IoT will dominate the IoT market with 13% CAGR. From the side of blockchain, our study estimated the global, uh, global blockchain market, excluding the cryptocurrency, will be worth of 500 billion by 2030, up from nearly 4 billion in 2020. And in the metaverse, the study shows that the metaverse market will grow from about 36 billion in 2020 to 144 billion in 2025 and further grow to a 13.6 trillion industry by 2040, a, a big uh, jump of Kagers. Um, and, and the entire metaverse over the next decade will depend on the maturity of underlying technologies, including the AR, the VR, AI, cloud, and blockchains. Many of these technologies are in the early stage of development, which means a good potential for you guys in the startup community to explore them and find a way to be part of the ecosystem. If we zoom in in the market at, of Asia Pacific, as well as our home turf here in the Philippines, the study of global data shows multi-billions to hundreds of billions of US dollars market in APAC across emerging tech in AI, IoT, blockchain, and metaverse. You can see BFSI, retail, energy, and utility, transport logistics are the common industries that will likely adapt to these technologies, followed by government and public sectors and entertainments in the area for metaverse, for example. Looking into those areas of emerging tech, a total new addressable market and giant ecosystem that we can all be part of, total amount of 451 billion US dollars. As startups, think about how you can contribute to this ecosystem and ideally with us. So enough of talking about the technologies, right? Now let me zoom in to my passions and my love related to startup communities, the PLDT Inno Lab. Based on my experience so far working in the innovation space, open innovation is really the way forward in tech, com uh, tech companies and technology community in general. And working closely with startup communities, one way to achieve our open innovation approach, and that's why it's been always high up in my innovation strategy. As I strongly believe alone we can and uh, we can achieve very limited, but together to co-innovate it, we can achieve more. Our Inno Lab launched in 2003 in Mandaluyong with the goal of introducing of value of connectivity to enterprise market. The Inno Lab is set to become the foundation of focused research, new, new generation product development, and innovations. Uh, our R&D Labs is where the new ideas are hatched to strengthen our ability to innovate and develop solutions that will suit our customers' business needs. And our Inno Lab focuses on research and innovation that has as the catalyst in contributing to the PLDD sustainable growth, as we believe. The vision of InnoLab is really to create a customer value collaboration with startups, whether they're in incubators, accelerators, academe, or other innovators, and successfully co-develop opportunities with them. Allow me to share the three pillars in the PLDD InnoLabs. So a while ago, I mentioned about the ecosystem partnerships that we work very close closely with uh, the startups, incubators, accelerators, the academics, and, and uh, the other output, uh, innovators if it's needed. Together we can do more. Uh, then the second pillar is about sustainability or the ESG angles. Uh, I have a lot of passions doing this and then we, we work with, very closely with our sustainability groups inside PLDD group, as well as also the other MVP uh, companies, the sister companies in the MVP group. Uh, and we want to focus on uh, addressing the 17 sustainable de development goals from uh, suggested by United Nations. 
And the third pillar is about lab operations and prototyping. Uh, we work very closely with startups. So if you have certain products or ideas or solution, you want to do the sandboxing, uh, um, API integrations or other testing of your products, we're happy to uh, uh, you know, work with you. Uh, in terms of the locations, currently we have three main locations. Uh, we have Dansalan, which we're doing the testing and prototyping. We have the Vitro Makati, which we do the showcases and demo. And we have the Davo, that we do community event and testings for our, our uh, friends uh, from um, the region. Um, and, and the next part that I'd like to show oh, is uh, what we call uh, the InnoLab Electio. A Latin word means the collection and best of quality of selections. So what does that mean? It's an area that we want to do the uh, plan to showcase and demo set of areas. In that area with emerging tech startup showcase areas, 5G wireless innovation corner, the fixed innovation corner, the IoT innovation corner, the sustainability ESG innovations showcase area, the ICT tech innovations, and also some test devices. I'm not saying that we have uh, all of them right now in our in, in no lab electio area, but that's our ambitions. And if there's uh, if as a startup you have have products actually we think would be worth to put in there, we'll be putting in there together. Uh, but you know the other areas actually I would like to show that you know over the years we've been working very strongly with the community, as in whether in the startup or the gig communities. You know, we've done virtual reality, gig nights, a lean startup workshop, code book camps, or uh, DevFest, BizFest, NASA Space Apps, DevCon Summit, Ignites, and An Android Masters. But uh, for the recent times, you know, uh, since 2001 until this year, we also do uh, startup collaborations with uh, some of the startups that we scout from the community. We've done our, start, our Smart Innovation Challenges in 2021, uh, which, which we found uh, a couple of great uh, startups that we could work together. We also sponsor a speaker for this week, uh, the Philippine Startup Week. And uh, we have been like judges for uh, other activities like the Arise Pulse, uh, yeah, Boots Accelerators. So we're here. We would like to work very closely with you. So this is me. Thank you for listening. Uh, let me just reiterate once more. As a startup, if you have a fantastic idea, a great product or, or services or solutions that you believe can solve a certain social economic problems for the government or the private sector, feel free to reach out to us here in PLB in the video with you. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, Melvin. So to our dear audience, please feel free to get in touch with PLDT to continue to co-innovate, collaborate, and co-market your ideas, products, and services. Here to give us insights on how 5G and IoT technologies can benefit the startup community is the head of PLDT Enterprise IoT Innovations, Ms. Selena Borromeo. Selena graduated with a bachelor's degree in information design in 2010 and a master's degree in business administration in 2019 from the Ateneo de Manila University. She has 12 years of professional experience in UX UI design, multimedia design, research and business development, and product design in the communications, publishing, retail, and telecommunications sectors. She has been with PLDT Enterprise for five years as a product development specialist and innovations architect in the fixed and wireless categories and is currently completing her master's in innovation and business at the Asian Institute of Management. Over to you, Selena. Okay, hello. Uh, thank you, Mickey, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Selena Borromeo, and today, together with my colleagues, I'll be talking about emerging technology, specifically 5G connectivity and IoT. So emerging technologies have become a significant point in, 
in the context of modern digital businesses. The term emerging technology has become a catch-all descriptor for the forward-looking developments that will fuel the next generation of innovators across high-tech industries. And there are several tools available for deciphering the individual trends that fit under that wide umbrella. Technology transformation is important to enterprises because it allows businesses and consumers to take advantage of newer technologies to improve the ways they can compete in their markets and serve their customers. With all the service options a customer has nowadays, the relationship a vendor has with their customers has never been more critical. And businesses must be agile and flexible to meet their evolving demands. And the onus is on the businesses to support these needs and streamline efficiency internally. And these technologies can help create powerful transformation within the organizations that can drive, um, of course, additional revenue and set apart from the competition, starting with connectivity as a strong foundation. So here at SMART, cellular technologies have really come a long way from analog and voice services to data-heavy networks of today. And where we all explore more information and transact with others and acquire products and services, seek the, the latest and greatest forms of entertainment and connect critical elements of our businesses and even connect and communicate with our loved ones in newer ways. We are at the precipice, though, of the next curve in cellular technology, one that will seek to empower consumers and businesses alike to build a hyper-connected network of things and experiences. 5G aims to provide the fastest and most robust wireless mobile connectivity, and we take pride in SMART in being recognized as the best in the country. We've clocked an average download speed. This is the latest um, from this year uh, of 200.43 Mbps. And again, independent organizations has recognized smart communications as the country's fastest mobile network, best mobile coverage, and best overall experience in the Philippines for the first half of 2022. While our 4G and LT footprint remains to have the nation's widest coverage, we have been really working very hard in the last few years to achieve the same for 5G and bring these revolutionary experiences to our customers throughout the Philippines. Today, there are already 7,300 5G sites around the Philippines in various key cities and SMART is committed to really further this network rollout. We started testing 5G as early as 2016 with the aim of exploring new capabilities in the 5G network around speed, reliability, and latency in our 5G for good campaigns. Um, leveraging features that can potentially unlock far more complex and impactful than surfing the web. In the last year and a half, SMART has established itself as one of the early movers in 5G standalone space as deployment and testing on 5G SA have been well underway exposing us to the rich and full capability of 5G. So um, true 5G is actually grounded on three key capabilities. No? Enhanced mobile broadband means ultra-fast speeds and over a wide coverage area. MMTC or massive machine type communications. This capability applies to when you need su to support a very large number of devices, which can only send data intermittently. So this is typically what we use for IoT or Internet of Things use cases. And then the third one refers to ultra-reliable, low-latency communication. So this applies to use cases that need ultra-low latency and reliability for mission-critical communications in IoT as well. Some IoT use cases. Okay, so what does this mean for up-and-coming startups or up-and-coming developers? 5G will definitely have a significant impact on industries in the coming, as soon as the coming years. So for example, 5G greatly impacts the telco and smart city industries due to the need for resilient communication infrastructure. At the same time, smart mobility, grid, and security systems further leverage 5G for efficient operations in cities. And then in manufacturing industry 4.0 and energy industries, they utilize 5G to enhance their IoT devices and in turn improve process monitoring. Fintech, healthcare, automotive, and rail sectors also rely on the low latency of 5G networks to deliver real-time information across large geographical distances. 
On the other hand, retail industries also primarily use 5G to improve um, customer experience. And one technology specifically for 5G I'd like to focus on is IoT. So 5G is a game changer, enabling faster and more secure, more stable connectivity that will power everything from self-driving vehicles to smart grids for renewable energy, to AI-enabled robots and factory floors, and soon powering the medical field for remote surgery. I'll focus on one industry, specifically the Philippine agribusiness sector today, for an in-depth view on how 5G can enable more advanced solutions for farmers. 5G offers higher data capacity and lower latency, greater device density, allowing businesses to leverage on analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And 5G is poised to transform agriculture as we know it. Companies are developing smarter farming systems that can benefit from 5G, AI, and edge computing. Some examples are predictive crop monitoring, wide area surveillance, precision farming, and autonomous vehicles. These use cases are rapidly emerging for opportunities to improve efficiency in the, in the sector, minimizing risks in natural calamities, and increase crop yield and quality. So to better produce and reduce waste, produce, produce, and reduce waste. With these kinds of 5G enabled solutions, our agribusiness sector will be able to produce better crops, even with limited resources, and it will help them become more efficient, allowing them to meet the demands of the ever-growing Philippine population. And this use case is actually already um, being applied in several countries. Farm operations will be able to use real-time insights into crops and agribusiness to make predictive, preemptive, and proactive farming and operational decisions, while also allowing for increased sustainability within the farm environment. 5G also helps boost supply chain operations, allowing for real-time monitoring of the supply chain, securing vital data, as well as keeping track of the entire supply chain process. 5G will really enhance communications among people, vehicles, and goods, and ultra-low latency offers minimal delays between messages, allowing logistic teams to extract and process vital data insights quickly. Real-time communication powered by 5G enables transport and logistics to improve their supply chain operations um, and to help them move at peak efficiency, avoiding costly errors and waste and boosting route planning. Uh, 5G and IoT will also transform the other end of the spectrum of the value chain for agribusiness, which is retail. It transforms the operations offering ultra-fast connectivity for in-store surveillance, while also offering reliable communications for demand forecasting, order management, and even inventory management and analytics. Even as we speak more and more, um, businesses are beginning to harness power, the power of 5G, even beyond smart cities and smart farming. 5G will bring more opportunities for telco in areas like um, Industry 4.0, automation, manufacturing, port, etc. So the potential of 5G and IoT can really make an impact on our economy and startups can begin to discover new technologies that will utilize this next generation of technology, of connectivity. So that's it for 5G. I'll turn you over back to Mickey. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Selena. Uh, tr uh, truly, 5G and IoT are landmark technologies, uh, game changers, if you will, that will reshape the manner in which we do business. One such technology that equally shares potential impact to the business sector is blockchain. Upon initially hearing blockchain, one may feel somewhat intimidated, myself included, in understanding its capability, definition, and ultimately its value. Luckily, we have a subject matter expert in this field, through our very own Darlene Toazon. Darlene is a professional electronics and communications engineer and is currently a product development specialist for EPLDT. Driven by her passion about cyber and information security, she takes pride in providing the best cybersecurity solutions and services possible. Her work is focused on creating and developing enterprise security solutions and services that help protect organizations against cyber attacks. 
Darlene graduated from the Ateneo de Manila University and worked for Schneider Electric prior to joining EPLDT. She is also currently taking her Master's in Business Administration in UP Verata School of Business. Go ahead, Darlene. Thank you, Mickey. So along with the introduction of 5G into our world comes the most groundbreaking technology yet. So we're talking about blockchain. But first, what is it? What is blockchain really? Blockchain is the underlying explosion of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, which is a game changer for the global economy. A blockchain is a database that allows transparent, tamper-proof data storage. And this technology is said to eventually replace traditional base databases altogether and has a lot of potential applications for businesses of all sizes, of all categories, including startups. But in order to understand what blockchain is um, and what it's used for our businesses, we need to understand what problem it was designed to solve. So let's step back and answer this question. How do you usually make a simple payment transaction? Let's say when person A sends money to person B. We rely on a middleman, in this case a bank, to establish trust. They perform the authentication and record keeping of sensitive data. But outside this example, most of our economic activities rely on the middlemen. When we verify documents, government IDs, and even when we vote. So just to complete a transaction, we need to trust firms, the banks, and the governments. And we call this centralized systems. And this is the growing problem. What if the middleman fails? Or it, what if the bank fails to do its transaction? If they fail, then the entire transaction fails. And you all know there are many ways a simple transaction can fail. It can be due to transaction limits, technical issues, and even account hacking. On top of that, centralized systems also have a great risk for corruption, fraud, and manipulation. So blockchain allows us to move to a decentralized system. And with decentralization, users can now be in full control of their transaction. No more middlemen, no more processors, and no more single point of failure. Let's now see how a blockchain transaction works. So on your screen, you can see uh, we'll start with when a, transaction, when a transaction request is made. The block is broadcasted in the network, and those in the network can approve the transaction. And then once approved, the block is then added to the chain, which all authorized users can now access. Finally, the transaction is complete. So is blockchain like a spreadsheet, like Excel? In a way, yes, but it has special qualities and delivers a lot more benefits than a traditional database. It eliminates human intervention and guarantees transparency, security, and many more. So how does blockchain change the financial industry? Blockchain with its cryptocurrency element allows easier and faster payment and money transfer activities. It is also a lot, it is also a lot more cost effective because it can, it, it can eliminate those high transfer charges. And then for healthcare industry, it helps with the storage of medical records. The information now is much more secure and easier to access. Blockchain in supply chain logic, logistics um, can be used to track goods from the point of origin to their final destination. So from the raw material stage through uh, production, processing, packaging, distribution, and consumption even, companies will be able to provide their customers with detailed information about their products. And when blockchain is applied to the agriculture sector, it allows the practical practitioners and farming communities to easily obtain up-to-date information and thus can make better decisions in their daily farming. Distributing data to other stakeholders is less vulnerable to data loss and distortion. All transactions have timestamp and the history of activities. So from seed to sale, we now have a solution to ensure food quality and safety. Ultimately, blockchain transforms business operations through data management. We just saw that in the banking, the healthcare supply chain, and agriculture sectors. We highlighted data security as all recorded data are more secured from breaches. 
we can enforce higher standards of data through, for example, smart contracts, giving us data quality. It also tells us when, where, and how every transaction occurred in real time. And to cap it off, the transaction is visible and verifiable to other organizations. So with all this, the blockchain technology can be implemented on mass scales by businesses and industries of all sizes and all categories. While there have already been several use cases of blockchain in the enterprise setup, it is the startups that need to reform with the power of blockchain. Blockchain, as a part of the working mechanism, automatically gives startups an edge over the others, being able to solve an amount of issues that traditional infrastructures and operations bring. And with the increasingly vast amount of data available today and the constantly evolving preferences of customers, businesses can no longer rely on the traditional business methods to survive in this digital era. So I'm, I'm turning it back to Miki. Thank you, Darlene, for walking us through a crash course on blockchain. So to give us now a glimpse on what's in store for us from the perspective of emerging technologies, we have Mr. John Granada. John also used to be part of the startup space in his early days, but is currently leading the managed IT, emerging technology, and business applications innovation, tasked to build innovation strategy and to grow the portfolio of, of emerging technology solutions under PLDT Enterprise. Previously, he is uh, one of our pioneer members of PLDT's IoT business development team, tasked with developing IoT business strategy, ensuring leads generation, and pushing key strategic portfolio imperatives that contribute to IoT portfolio revenue growth. He also worked as EPLDT's senior innovation design specialist, focusing on sourcing and developing ideas and processing them into possible innovations that the company can roll out. This can be new products, process enhancements, business models, or customer experiences. Turning over to you, John. Thanks, Mickey. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. All right. So artificial intelligence has always been a subject of both hope and fear for some. And today, we're, we're going through what AI is, its use cases, and the reasons why we should get started on our AI journey. But first, let's get started with our alignment of our definition of AI. Artificial intelligence refers to simulation of human intelligence and machines that are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions. The term may also be applied to any machine that exhibits traits associated with human minds, such as learning and problem solving. In short, it's actually an attempt to create a virtual thinking digital mind with the aim of assisting humans, our quality of life, and how we do business. Now let's take a quick look back in time and see understand the history of AI. The term AI or artificial intelligence was actually termed as early as 1955 with John McCarthy as the father of AI. Fast forward a little bit into 1997, and we have Deep Blue, a supercomputer that had a chess AI that actually beat Grandmaster Garrick Kasparov. Further even more, we have IBM Watson, who actually won the first place prize of one million in Jeopardy. And then a bit nearer to where we are now, Sophia, a humanoid robot, was actually introduced by Hanson Robotics. So it's actually a robot with an AI mind. But the major question is why we should start looking into AI as soon as possible. And the next slide might give you a good idea of why. The AI market potential by 2026 is projected to reach 135.8 billion USD. That's roughly 7.88 trillion pesos in our local currency. Zooming in further, we have 32.6 billion US for the APAC. That's 1.89 trillion pesos. And then looking into locally, the Philippine market is forecasted to have 0.49 billion US. And that's not a bad number. That's 28.42 billion pesos. Overall, AI is seen 
to, to be forecasted to have 14% global care, which is astounding and tells us that we want to be part of the ecosystem market that will play a role in achieving these numbers, or at least get a share of this market. But before we get started and before we get excited about these numbers, we first have to, have to understand how AI works. So in the image above, we simplify AI in its value chain into four segments, data inputs, big data, AI technology, and use cases. As illustrated in the image above, data is produced by all digital activities, phone calls, emails, sensors, payments, social media posts, and many more. It is also manipulated by machines in form of machine-to-machine -machine exchanges. When analyzed in aggregate, can reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions, which ultimately, in the end, translates into various use cases for large enterprise and startups alike. Disruptions are already inbound. And as we see in the image, big players on the left are already being di disrupted, if not yet disrupted, by tech-centric companies. Some of the famous examples would be Tesla, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. And with this, let's go through some of the use cases that have been already implemented today and have already provided a significant benefit to businesses and organizations globally. So the first use case is actually Novartis. And Novartis uses AIML for drug development. Novartis empowers its, its scientists with AI to speed up the discovery and development of breakthrough medicines, to get medicines faster to human hands for consumption to save lives. With this, Novartis is able to reduce time for drug formulation and to accelerate drug simulations. The next use case is actually from a humanitarian cause, the ocean cleanup. The ocean cleanup actually uses machine learning to identify plastic pollution in rivers and simulate how it moves in the ocean. This insights actually power passive cleanup machines and help remove plastic that impacts ecosystems. With this, the ocean cleanup targets to reduce ocean plastic by 90% by 2040. The next use case comes from the healthcare industry, Kepro. Kepro actually uses uh, text analytics NLP to ensure quality of care by automating how clinics perform their utilization reviews, medical appeals, and quality assessments by being able to extract information from both unstructured and structured patient data. With this, Kepro has improved efficiency and quality of its clinic's healthcare services. And lastly, one of the nice uh, simple examples of how AI is implemented right now is progressive insurance use of its service bond, which uses NLP to provide a additional service channel able to learn from interaction from its customers and to improve its quality of response to its customers. With its quote unquote flow bot uh, level of speed and agility, it, al it allows uh, the bot to have constant improvement and to further better the customer experience for progressive customers. Now that we've seen the market potential, the global business disruptions happening as we speak, we must start immediately to build and develop solutions with AI in order to play a space, not just in the local AI space, but also in the regional and global market. Thank you very much and a pleasant afternoon to you all. Back to you, Mickey. Thank you, John, for uh, helping us get a better grasp on AI, along with its uh, benefits and uh, value chain for the business sector. And finally, to complete our panel, I uh, would like to introduce as well Mr. Nico Peralta. Uh, Nico is the Head of Enterprise Innovation Strategy at PLDT, where he champions the end-to-end -end discovery, ideation, feasibility, and operationalization of key technologies and services for the B2B portfolio across connectivity, ICT, and IoT. He also leads the engagement of key partnerships and synergies across both technology players and industry partners to widen the ecosystem and further the adoption of strategic technologies 
in the Philippine enterprise space. Predominantly in business and technology consulting, Nico has also developed functional domain exper expertise over the last 13 years in sales, operations, business development, product and project management, and R&D. Nico helps enterprises create new revenue streams and develop capabilities through the adoption of new and emerging technologies. Having a holistic uh, enterprise development background, you can expect a comprehensive perspective of technology towards the achievement of business value and overall customer experience. Glad to have you with us, uh, Nico. Likewise, so, Nikki. Uh, not, not any, don't have anything to share, at least as far as the slides are concerned, but happy, happy to sit in the panel with my colleagues and talk about you know, how we see the ecosystem um, and especially our startup uh, audience uh, today playing a huge part in that ecosystem for innovation. Very good. Thank you, Nico. So we'd like to bring in again uh, the rest of the panel uh, so that we could begin as well as our discussion. Do we have everyone? Okay. So once again, thank you, uh, everyone, for walking us through your different technological expertise and insights. But for now, allow me to uh, dive a bit deeper into the discussion, especially with respect to how exactly our startup community can play a role in this overall tech ecosystem and ultimately benefit from the solutions presented. Would like to start with uh, Darlene. So hello again, Darlene. You gave us a, a very good primer uh, into the value that blockchain provides. Though specific to our audience, what can blockchain actually do for startups? Uh, thank you, Mickey. Um, I think block basically blockchain offers an enormous amount of opportunities um, for startups of all industries. And maybe an example will help. So let's take a retail startup. Um, for one thing, it can help retail startups manage inventories more efficiently. Um, and because blockchain is, is um, basically just a distributed ledger, it can replace those very manual data collection and processing. And this saves them a lot of money as well. Um, so basically, blockchain can make many aspects of a business easier. Blockchain replaces those old infrastructures, the legacy software, and even the old processes, which not only raises the expense of doing business, but also make them ineffective and inconsistent. Um, but I think in order for startups to appreciate blockchain, they need to be able to deal with blockchain using the business process and the technology that is familiar to them. And I think that is the gap we're trying to fill as um, evangelists of technology trends. What we need to understand or what they need to understand is what blockchain provides them from a functional perspective and what benefit it gives them and their customers. Um, and for the technical stuff, there are trained people that will take care of that for them. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Darlene. So fascinating. So hopefully uh, tackling blockchain is no longer something uh, quite daunting, especially to the audience who's uh, listening today. So uh, another technology uh, that was discussed earlier is artificial intelligence, uh, which I believe is slowly becoming a significant contributor in the area of business efficiency. So perhaps, John, uh, you can also share what startups should consider when uh, building solutions using AI technology. Thanks, Mickey. Um, I think the first consideration is really about being able uh, to create value by solving problems. Uh, just as any other technology, it has to have its own needs. Uh, another consideration that startups need to realize is that they should not um, fall in love with the beauty of technology. And a current day example would be when you build apps, you don't really go around and tell your clients or tell your partners how beautiful your code is, but rather you tell them what your apps or your programs can do. And lastly, it's really to never stop improving the technology. Uh, you cannot build a solution that that has no roadmap and be, having a roadmap actually deters competition and startups can maintain and evolve their unique value proposition by doing that. So, so I think, Nikki, that that's what startups need to understand and consider as early as now when they start on their AI journey. 
about it. Thank you, John. So to again, to the audience listening, hope you were able to gain much from these insights coming from John, uh, especially if you are also considering uh, utilizing AI in your businesses. Uh, I particularly like what you said, John. So especially on the bit on not falling in love with the technology, but rather possibly whatever it would be addressing, especially on for these startups. So uh, thinking now about 5G as the next uh, primary mover in a more robust and future-ready backbone, uh, Selena was able to touch on the future plans of utilizing, uh, utilizing 5G for business. So would like to ask now, uh, Selena, what are some ex uh, sample innovations or use cases being done today by startup companies that utilize uh, 5G as an enabler? Okay, uh, we've seen a lot of smart city use cases, especially in the intelligent video space. So we've seen a few startups utilizing AI and 5G um, enabled videos for traffic management, safety, and even marketing. Um, 5G also a little bit more exciting is uh, 5G is a critical enable enabler for the metaverse. So some learning management systems and even corporations have moved their meetings to the met to virtual spaces, and they utilize these spaces where students and teachers and off um, colleagues can interact. Since metaverse requires requires a lot of bandwidth because virtual spaces are consumed by a VR headset, and they require reliable real time data transmission. So that's that's one trend that actually is very exciting we've seen this year. Um, this same use cases of virtual spaces spills over to manufacturing. Um, the industries also use um, virtual spaces to communicate and operate. IT support and field service technicians can use the metaverse uh, with reliable connectivity to remotely assist uh, field applications. Some organizations have also dipped their toes in basic maintenance tasks during the pandemic remotely. And when travel restrictions and health constraints were preventing um, these companies from sending people in person. So so those are the, the more notable use cases we've seen from startups. Thank you, Selena. So essentially, a 5G as a door opener for the metaverse. Yeah. Um, everyone has actually been looking forward to what can uh, what the metaverse can actually bring to us, uh, what, how we can benefit from these. So we'll all be looking forward uh, to this space. So we've actually covered a lot, and so far we've discussed uh, blockchain's role in the startup community, how 5G uh, can make an impact on businesses today, and how emerging technologies act as enablers for the benefit of this company, uh, sorry, or this community, rather. Uh, would now like to go back to the uh, parting messages of Melvin earlier, so if you still recall, especially on open innovation and collaboration models with startups. So I wanted to direct this question to Nico. So would you be able to share what programs exist to help enable this collaboration and uh, co-innovation? Yeah, thanks, Mickey. Maybe, maybe you know, I, I wear two hats uh, in the organization, yeah. and I'll take that. I'll take that in in, in two parts. No, one maybe sure. uh, with PLDT Enterprise as an innovator. You know, all of us trying to come up with the best best of breed solutions, services, and 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 products for our customers. And on the other end, being an enabler and a man in terms of technology. You know? So we'll start with with the former. Um, you know, we. The pandemic, uh, the pandemic has pushed us, um, and and, the, and just at the rate of development of technology has really pushed us to our edges, no? to our edges. Be it a large organization like PLDT, it's, it, it has pushed us to our edges and made us realize really that the game, the name of the game these days is really ecosystem thinking. We do not have the monopoly of the best and, and, and brightest ideas. As a, as a matter of fact, in the last maybe seven, eight years. That I've been with the organization and communicating, you know, co-innovating, uh, attending design thinking workshops, hackathons, and what have you with, with a lot of startups and members of the academe. There's such a rich uh, mind, uh, especially with the youth that we have today, you know. Uh, they have the agility, you know, they're not jaded by the restrictions and, and, and some of the, you know, um, let, let's just put it lightly, they, they have quite a bit of ingenuity on, on the adoption of new technology. So that's one. No, um, In order for us to really succeed in tapping into these new uh, and emerging technologies as John, Darl, and Cell all have pointed out, no, it's really about carving out our space, no? understanding where we can provide value. 
John put it very, very well. No, it's it's beyond the elegance of technology. It's beyond just adoption for adoption's sake or innovation for innovation's sake. It's about solving problems and finding your niche, you know, in terms of providing specific elements within that ecosystem that can help solve problems. I flip though to the other side, you no. Know? So being such, you know, a large organization with quite a bit of investment around a number of things from platform to infrastructure, not to mention obviously our core, which is our network. You know? uh, we also strive to be enablers across the technology space. Um, so going back to your question, when we're talking at programs, um, we've made it a point to really communicate, start up, uh, start grassroots programs with the academe. So we have partnerships with the likes of Sanbeda, Ateneo, La Salle, um, and what have you, you know? and even some of the incubator programs of our other industry organizations like CAP. Um, so that's one. The second is really immersing ourselves in the conversations of young organizations and companies. So the startup community. You know, there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of bright ideas. There's a lot of um, new and innovative ways to apply technologies in order for us to make the world a better place, put it, to put it very, very simply, right? Whether it be better for an organization, an entity, a country. In general, just making the world a better place. So we've built up the programs in around supporting hackathons, incubation programs, grassroots programs. We, as a matter of fact, as Melvin mentioned, have a, um, an innovation challenge that we ran the last two years. And we are uh, doing that again in Q1. So I guess this is an open invitation. Please stay tuned. We will be sending out a lot more uh, communication and invitation uh, towards the first quarter innovation challenge that we will again be running. Um, and then I guess the last portion, and I think this is a question that's not said or not openly discussed, how does PLDTC, um, you know, investing? Uh, there's a lot of, I was part of the kickoff during day one, and a lot of it was targeted also to the investors, no? opening our wallets. So from a, from a product development, product innovation perspective, there's three ways, right? You build, you buy, or you partner. Um, customarily, we're very strong in partnership. But we are also on the lookout for, you know, uh, startups, especially in the early stages where we can actually invest or acquire. Um, but in general, I think that last one, that build, so, so build, partner, and acquire, that build is kind of dipping on the, the lower side. Obviously, we have our core in the network, but we don't aim to build anymore on new tech, at least on our own. It's about building now the ecosystems that can support. So there's always going to be a space. There's always going to be an opportunity for everyone to flourish in this new economy and this new market to tap into. Very good. So thank you, Nico. Uh, very well said. So again, to everyone, again, an open invitation. Uh, please do look forward to these programs, especially the Innovation Challenge slated for uh, the early part of next year. And again, as Nico mentioned, we are looking for strong partnerships as we too are in search for the next unicorn. So we've actually gone a bit uh, over, um, over time. So and I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights, everyone, for this thought leadership exercise. Uh, to the startup community listening in, we hope you learned much from these emerging technologies that were shared with us. And we look forward to further collaborations as we continue to flourish in this thriving community. Thank you so much and good afternoon.